Hello, hello! Today I will be, not surprisingly, featuring one of the newer Japanese DDs. In this case, however, I'm not sure if you could technically call this a new Japanese DD, considering it is the Fubuki that I am commenting on. However, it's right now under the code name Ayanami, but as you can see looking at the ship itself, you see 3x3 torpedo launchers and two turrets. In fact, the standard Fubuki Sea Hall, except the ship is now tier 6. This of course has led to a reduction in torpedo speed and damage and such, but overall, this is honestly a very strong T6 ship. Very strong. Now, I am cheating a bit because I am using my Shimakaze captain, because honestly I cannot be arse leveling a completely new captain for it, so I will have a concealment edge that I normally wouldn't. But even without this concealment edge, it's not like you need it to stealth torp and such, because uh, your torpedo range is actually 10 kilometers on the ship, and they hit for 16 point, is it 3k damage each, and they're 59 knots of speed. Whoops, my minimap was a bit too big, sorry about that. Anyway, um, first thing I do with spawn, I, I get matched into T5 to T7 matchmaking. So, pretty normal at T6, sometimes you get T8, uh, rare occasions you only get T5, T6, but that's pretty rare these days, so facing up against T7s is pretty common these days. And now, what I was saying is, I consider this very strong. First of all, the gunpower feels pretty much twice what you had, well, you have 2x4, I mean 2x2 instead of having uh, 2x1 like you had in the Mutsuki, so the gunpower feels compared to Mutsuki significantly stronger. The torpedo power, of course, a significant leap as well. Instead of having the 2x3 launchers, you now have 3x3. And in general, compared to the Mutsuki in the past, this is definitely an upgrade. In fact, I can't. Anyone who's on the Mutsuki right now, or on the, in the, on that part of the IGN tree, um, I I don't think any one of them will be unhappy when they find their Mutsuki is being replaced by this ship. Because this ship is, in my opinion, just a straight-up upgrade in pretty much every single way. You gain better, significantly better gun power, and you gain uh, significantly better torpedo power. Now, starting on this map, seeing as I had the southernmost spawn possible, usually I dislike going A on this map, but seeing as I had the southernmost most spawn possible, I decided whatever, might as well go here quickly, take A. Unlikely it will be contested if it will. Maybe I will find a target to torp. Now, uh, the name, of course, there's probably some confusion about the fact that it's named Ayanami. A lot of these uh, ships for during this testing purpose, or well, not testing, preview purpose, have these uh, basically made up temporary names. So even though it says Ayanami, this is definitely the Fubuki. In fact, the upgrades say Fubuki themselves. Hell, even if you save like replays, you know how it writes the name of the ship you're playing, it says Fubuki if you're playing the, the Ayanami. So this, this is basically Fubuki in every, sing in every single sense except the name. Let's see if I get to show off the bread and butter of this shi of the ship, which is of course the torps. Um, for T6, I mean they did nerf they nerfed the Minikaze. For those that aren't aware, they took down the torp speed quite a bit on the Minikaze, which is probably a good thing because I don't think there's anyone who doesn't consider the Minikaze to be pretty goddamn overpowered at T5. I mean it's a pretty pretty silly ship at T5. So they've taken down the torp speed a, a bit. It's not a big nerf, but hey, it's a nerf that was probably needed, and I'm not going to argue it. On the other hand, the Mutsuki, well, it was a bit of a struggle point. Uh, I mean, good players could make it work, but still you were stuck with those uh, 2x3 torp launchers, and you were stuck with only having uh, two 2x1 gun barrels. It was not fun. I mean, you could make it work, but that didn't mean that the ship was fun to play. This guy happened to turn away, but... Once again, because you have so many torps to launch, you can launch these wide spreads, you still end up scoring a hit, which I did here. Which is always nice, and that's something you really couldn't do in the Mutsuki. In the Mutsuki it was pretty much do or die, you land a hit, or you miss completely. But the difference is with this uh, T6, Ayanami, or well, Fubuki, is that you, you have this capability of firing these very, very wide spreads, which give you more consistent and more overall damage. In fact, I'm pretty sure, sure that uh, Ayanami or Fubuki players are going to get a lot higher average damage than they had in the, in the Mutsuki. 
Just checking to see if my teammates need a smoke, seeing how their HP pools are looking. I don't really need the smokes too much in this ship because I don't. you don't use the guns too much. I mean, it's still, even though yes, you have twice the barrels, that's still not really enough to make you a um, gunboat force to be reckoned with. So mostly I'll just be dumping the smoke for my allies when needed. Seeing as they look like they're about heading for this gap, I kind of want to torp this Bayern. Yeah, let's dump it all there. I think there's stuff about to come around the corner, so we'll be counting on that. Once again, you see that I make this so same thing you see me do in the Shimakaze, which is I, the, I spread them out to secure multiple hits, or at least a hit. Now something surprising happens, the Aoba and Fiji comes around the corner, so this time I instantly smoke up. I switch to AP, as the Fiji is giving me a broadside. Those that aren't aware, Royal Navy Cruisers, of course, extremely squishy when giving broadside. The Aoba turns in when he sees me and blocks the Fiji, which results in me landing a lot of Torp hits. And once again, that's the, that's kind of the kind of shows the sheer torpedo power that you have with this new ship. I mean, it's going to be a, a lot of frustrated. I even hit the Bayern in the back as well. So that that kind of happens surprisingly often in this ship. You get you score a bunch of hits because 10k in range and nine torps at a time is a lot for T6. It doesn't. It's not a, that much for T8. Even though Fubuki feels very strong at T8 as well. But it is definitely a lot at T6, so overall just very powerful. And of course the reload is, well I'm using the 10% reload perk, Captain perk, so I think my reload is 1 minute and 8 seconds. But you can pretty much see every time my volley has finished traveling, it's already up again. So there's very little downtime where you just sit around and you wait for TARS, but pretty much you can follow and track them all the way to the end, and then you can launch already the next one. So it's actually quite fun to play. I mean, if you like torpedo boat type of gameplay, then yes, this is a quite a fun ship to play. In fact, I'd be surprised if that Bayern doesn't eat one of one. That was two hits? Three hits? That was the Bayern dead. Did I hit anything else? Oh, hello. Let's see if I can... Oh, never mind. Wistcast was faster in the Congo. And I'm gonna just keep pushing up, but you can see I already got uh, seven torpedo hits. I'm up to 82k damage, and I didn't. Even, I haven't even had like the best possible volleys, like the canning in the beginning, dodging. But you have more cons overall more consistent damage constantly. Of course, seeing as I'm the wait, we have do have another DD, but our Kiev is at um, B10, basically apparently trying to be as useless as possible. Because, well, I can't think of much other reason for him to be at B10, so I'm gonna keep pushing up and capping objectives, which is, of course, what you should be doing, even in a Japanese DD. For some reason, people think that the only person, only type of ship that should ever fight for objectives is a US DD, and even they are very skeptical about doing it. No, Japanese DDs, you should be pushing up, you should be scouting, hunting the enemy DDs, or giving spotting uh, information to your team. You don't have to. By hunting enemy DDs doesn't necessarily mean someone is expecting you to go there and shoot them and kill them. No, you should spot them. Let your team know where they are so they can help you actually kill them. Oh, where's this Nagato guy? York, oh, he's turning away. Yeah, that looks about right. I don't know about this turning away. I might have been a bit buggy there. Because it was locked on to Nagata, not the York. But uh, that Nagata is turning away from that island. I'm gonna see if actually Wistcast is so low here. So I'm gonna turn around and see if I can save him. Instead of going for the cap here. We're not really in a hurry to get the cap. Or not really in a need for it. But... Uh, Gonna see if I can make it in time to smoke him up. In fact, I'll see if I can just make this big, big wall of smoke that will hide him from line of sight and uh, also give him some sort of cover to sail into. The Königsberg, unluckily detonated. Those torps I launched oh, ages ago at the Nagata, hitting now. So, yes, torps are definitely slow. But they do have the range, which gives them a lot of versatility. 
Uh, making up the wall here. That should be a good cover. Wait, where are those shells going? Never mind. So much for any good cover. Well, shit happens. Megathotorps. And let's see. Time to push into the camp. The, the mayhem is here. I'm not too worried about the mayhem though. Well, especially with that HP. I don't think anyone should be worried about the mayhem. See if I can secure the kill. Nope, someone else got him. Minikaze is here. The third traverse. Very slow, just like usual with IJ and DDs. But unlike the old uh, um, Mutsuki, your gun power isn't that bad. I mean, yes, it's not it's not US DDs, but you can actually do deal damage back to DDs. That doesn't mean you should be picking a fight with Farragut or anything, but it does feel significantly better than the Mutsuki ever did. Dodging his torps. Those looked a bit panicky, to be honest. Landing two torps on the Nagata. Four torps on the Nagata that I launched at earlier. So he's dead. Seeing if I can secure this Minikaze here. You kind of tend to forget the torps you launch because, I mean, they, it's such a long travel time and they're already up. The reload, that's what I kind of mean. You, you're pretty much. There's very little time where you just sit doing nothing in this ship, and I like that. I hate DDs that become boring, but in this ship it feels like you're constantly doing something, which is something I quite enjoy, especially for DD boat. Uh, usually I have to go for the low tier ones to get it, but uh, I feel they've struck a pretty good balance on this ship. Uh, I'm not gonna call it overpowered, because the torpedoes are so slow, and it still doesn't have good enough gun power, even though it has more competitive gun power than the Mitsuki. Uh, let's face it, if it faces any real uh, pure gunboat DD, it's gonna get shredded apart. It just doesn't feel as clunky as the Mutsuki did. But, yeah, don't... Not overpowered, no, simply because of the lack of speed, but it's definitely strong and not underpowered in any way, like one could argue that the Mutsuki was. See if I can make this three. Well, I got three volleys. We got 860 points. Gotta take in the time it takes for the torps to travel. At this point, it's better, honestly, to just go for a guess. I mean, he's maybe gonna bump into the wall and he's gonna glide to the right. It's gonna kill his speed. Bumping into the wall is gonna kill his speed. You gotta take that into account when you shoot those predictions. It predicts where he would end up, but it doesn't start predicting for the, or calculating in how much the wall affects his trajectory until he actually runs into the wall, which will of course kill his speed, which will of course change his momentum, which will mean that the original uh, projection is probably going to be really off. So you kind of always have to compensate for these things. Of course, if you're wondering where are my rewards like Devastating Strike, uh, High Caliber, Confederate, all these things, where have they disappeared? Well, that's of course because uh, these are test ships, so I don't get them. Spamming some HE, and my torps actually look really, really good. Yep, he's not gonna get out of that one. Nice! This would have been my unofficial Kraken, but, well, of course, since it's test account, don't get it, but the points are quickly adding up, and, well, yeah, we're not gonna lose it at this point. Even in a random battle, I find it hard to believe the team can throw this game at this point. Anyway, the game ends, and you can see the sheer damage at the end, 144,000, and of course, three solo caps, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, this of course shows up in the XP as well, 2.5k base XP, in otherwise fairly eventless game. Looking at the stats, 132k damage, 133 actually, just from the torpedoes, and this is what, a 13-14 minute game? 14 minutes actually. So. Definitely a strong new addition, and any Mutsuke player out there, or anyone who put, was put off the IG and DD line at the Mutsuke, is probably going to be jumping with joy right now, because this is a very different ship than the old Mutsuke was, and that's something I can guarantee. Anyways, let's move on to the build part. Right, as usual, I will start with the build, or sorry, the modules part of this ship. Now... The range isn't honestly that big of a deal on this ship, the gun range, because as you saw, yes, you have some additional additional guns, but it's still probably not worth it. 
Now you really just want the hull upgrade. It gives you HP, it gives you rudder shift, but ultimately it, it gives you the option to upgrade, upgrade your torps. Because the stock torps are actually 6km torps, which is pretty damn garbage. There's really no easy way of saying that. It's gonna be garbage if, if you have to use stock torps. This is with a 15 point captain, so your actual concealment is probably gonna be like 6.8. So definitely want to get the torp, hull up torp upgrade quickly. Consumable wise, always recommend premium smoke, premium repair if you can afford it. Upgrade wise, uh, main RNs mod 1, aiming system mods 1, propulsion, and finally acceleration, not turning circle because rudder shift is already 2.5 seconds, so you really don't need it at all. Captain perks wise, basic firing, well, basic firing training first, followed of course by last stand, followed by Vigilance, well, I mean, you could use Superintendent, but I personally like Vigilance on a lot of my DDs, especially IGN, where you don't use the smoke that much. Survivability Expert and Concealment Expert. 16, 17 point into Torpedo Armament, and then the last point in the basics of survivability. This is my standard Shimakaza Captain perk. So this is something that I know you can use all the way to T10. However, there is some argument to be made here about using Torpedo Acceleration especially on this T6 Fubuki, because you have 10 km torps, and 8 km torps isn't that bad. Now, how the, and this would also work if you move on to the Shirat, uh, Shiratsuyu, uh, which is, the, of course, the part of the gunboat line, or if you use it on the Akatsuki, which is going to be basically the new T7. But here, of course, there is a problem. you got to take into consider consideration that your detectability is 7.2, so doing this, if you don't have a 15 point captain ready, is going to make life a lot harder once you move up in tiers. Once you get, of course, tier 8, and you get to, well, the Kigero has of course been moved to T8, then you once again, you catch a breather, because you get, you have, uh, well, yes, you still have 10km torps, but you get the tier 8 module, which means your detectability drops down to 6km, even without the captain perk. However, moving on further to Shima and such, or the Yugumo, which is the new T9, then you got a 3 torps, which I recommend, and for this, once again, Torpedo Acceleration seems pretty garbage. So, honestly, only use Torpedo Acceleration on the Ayanami if you got the doubloons to be able to spec out of it later, because you will be wanting to spec out of it later, that I can guarantee. Anyway, this was my new Fubuki commentary, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I'm getting a bit tired, so I'm gonna call it. Good night, everyone.